What's up guys, I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today I'm gonna to show you how to rebuild the top end on your KTM 250 or 300 TPI dirt bike. To keep your bike running good, you wanna replace that piston around 80 hours of use. You're also gonna to wanna to replace the oil pump and make sure one of the lines going to a pressure sensor is free and clear at that time as well. If you do those things along with the top end, it's gonna help prevent some of the issues we see with these TPI bikes. Now we're gonna show you how to do it on this 2021 KTM 250 XC TPI, but the process will be similar for your KTM, Husqvarna, or Gas Gas 250 and 300 fuel injected two strokes. Just keep in mind that throughout the process, you wanna to refer to your model specific service manual for more information, proper procedures, and specs. To do this job, there's some things that you have to have and some things that are just nice to have. So the things you have to have are common hand tools, including Torx bits, regular sockets. We also have some Allen keys and you're gonna to wanna to have a torque wrench as well as a decking and timing tool. This is a must have. You're also gonna need an M6 bolt that has at least 30 millimeters of thread and then we recommend having the correct ball hone and then we have some brushes to clean everything off everything else is just common hand tools if you want to check things for warpage make sure you have a straight edge and a feeler gauge and then other than that we're just going to be using safety glasses rubber gloves and some rags for parts we have a vertex piston kit that comes with the piston rings the circlips and the wrist pin you're also going to want to get a wrist pin bearing, a spark plug, and some gaskets. So all of these gaskets we got off the OEM diagram, but you can just get a gasket set, whatever you wanna do. But keep in mind the base gaskets, you're gonna have several different sizes and you order them individually off the OEM diagram. Other than that, you know, it's stuff like the head gasket. So that's two O-rings and some crush washers. And then you've got eight O-rings for the power valve. Now, other than that, we're gonna use contact cleaner, assembly lube, and some coolant. To start out, we already removed a couple simple items. So we took the seat off and our gas tank. The next step for us is to remove our exhaust pipe and we're also gonna drain our coolant. Once the coolant's drained, we're gonna reinstall that bolt. You're gonna to wanna to refer to your manual for the torque spec. It's also a good idea to replace that crush washer when you reinstall that bolt. Next, we're gonna use a T45 socket to remove the engine hangers. It's gonna be the same process for both sides. Now we're gonna remove our radiator hose that sits in front of the cylinder. So there's four spots you need to disconnect this at. So both sides of the radiator, and then one spot it's going into the cylinder head, the other spot it's going up to a tube in the frame. And thing about the coolant, there's always more in there. So make sure you have your pan underneath. Just got a bunch out of that hose. So from here, we're just gonna disconnect everything that's attached to the cylinder. So we're gonna start with this breathe, breather hose for that power valve cover. Then we'll remove the spark plug cap and the spark plug. Then after that, I'm just throwing a rag over the top to keep dirt out. Pull the cover up on that coolant temp sensor, squeeze the tab in, pull it off. And then from here, we're just gonna take the injectors off so we have the fuel rail or the fuel hose hooked up to those. So before you take them off though, you've got the two electrical connectors for the injectors. 
You're going to want to pull the boots back on them. And those connectors just have a tab on that bottom side. And we're going to remove the two bolts going into the injector. With the bolts out, you just need to gently pull up on the injector, maybe rock it a little bit. And then we'll remove this whole injector and fuel rail assembly. After that, we're gonna disconnect the pressure sensor hose. And then once that's disconnected, we're gonna remove our power valve covers. So that's gonna be a T25 Torx bit. So the gasket on this side actually stuck on. We're gonna pull that off. So I've got that removed, but we're not gonna be able to take it all the way off until you've got a little clip on here. We're gonna pop the clip clip out and then you've got a linkage arm for the power valve. You just pop that off. To remove that clip, we're just gonna pop it out with a screwdriver. And this also, it's hooked in there so you're not gonna lose it, but I'm keeping a finger on it just so it didn't fall down. We'll just pull that out. And then, like I said, this should just pop right off. We're just gonna pry on it with a screwdriver, just like that. Take the gasket out. Now keep in mind, it could be helpful to put a rag over this hole because that clip could actually drop down in there. So just a tip if you're worried about that. Now we're gonna crack the cylinder head bolts loose and we're gonna do that in a crisscross pattern. There's six of them. And this is gonna be our 13 millimeter socket. Once you have them all cracked loose, you can go ahead and remove them all. And as you pull these off, keep track of those copper gaskets. Now we can remove the cylinder head. You should be able to rock it free, but if you can't, you can use a dead blow hammer on that area where your engine hanger hooks onto. And keep in mind, you're gonna have two dowel pins so when you pull this off, keep an eye out for those. They should always stay in the cylinder, but you just wanna make sure that they stay tight. Then we'll remove the two O-rings. Now I'm just gonna use a finger to open up that power valve. That's gonna give us access to all of the cylinder base nuts. And we're gonna use a 13 millimeter wrench to loosen them up. Since we have our bike on a lift, we're gonna throw a stand under here. The reason for that is we need the back tire off the ground. We wanna rotate the piston to its lowest point. That's gonna make it easier to pull the cylinder out. So I'm gonna go ahead, push that up. We're gonna shift the bike into gear. I'm just going straight to second. Um, piston just came all the way up and I'm gonna watch it go all the way down. Just rotating that rear wheel. And again, that's just giving us a little more clearance so we can get the cylinder out. So now, you know, this thing might be stuck on here. This one broke free, but again, if it doesn't break free very easy, you can hit the sides of it with the dead blow hammer. So I'm almost off. I don't want the piston to slam into anything, so I'm just gonna reach in from the side and hold it while I pull the cylinder all the way off. And I can just gently rest that down. Like I said, there's always more coolant. Just be aware of that. And we'll bring the cylinder over to the bench. Now I'm gonna pull the gasket off. So once that is out of the way, you wanna stuff a rag. Well, we're actually gonna rotate the piston up and stuff a rag underneath it before we remove the circ clips.
Now we're gonna use a pick to remove the circlip from the piston. Can be helpful to cover it up with a rag. I'm just gonna pry it out though. So this one actually popped out, but that's why you wanna use a rag and make sure you're wearing safety glasses. The next step is to push the wrist pin out. So to do that, we're gonna use an extension. If it doesn't just push out, you don't wanna hammer on it. You definitely wanna use a piston pin puller. So this one's pushing out. We can remove the piston. Underneath here, we have our needle bearings. Pull those out. Now that we're torn down, we're gonna clean up our gasket sling surface and clean up the rest of the parts, and then we're gonna go through and inspect them. Once you have the gasket surface cleaned up, you wanna remove the rag from around the connecting rod, and we're gonna make some inspections. So the first one we're gonna inspect is the small end on the connecting rod. You wanna check for any galling or deep grooves or visible damage on this. This one is just fine. The next thing we're gonna inspect on the connecting rod is the big end. So to inspect that, this does slide side to side and you don't wanna confuse that with up and down play. So we're gonna move it all the way to one side and then we're gonna to try to pull this up and down. If you feel any play up and down, you definitely need to build, get your crank rebuilt. That one is feeling good, so we're gonna use it again. Now the other thing, since we're here, you can see your reeds from inside of here, so you can shine a, a flashlight right where your exhaust pipe normally sits, shine it down in there, look at the reeds, make sure they're not chipped or damaged, and if they look good, you can go ahead and reuse them. So if your reeds look good, you can move on to the next check, which is making sure your crank bearings are good. Now, if you're pulling up and down on the connecting rod and you've got plain one of those bearings, you might feel it. The other thing you can do is make sure the crank rotates smoothly all the way around. If it feels rough or if you can hear any growling noises, that's cause for concern and you're gonna wanna tear the bottom down and inspect the parts and replace anything that's worn out. Now moving on to the cylinder, I know this thing is still filthy, but we're gonna take some of the power valve parts off before we start cleaning. So I'm gonna start with a T30 Torx bit. We've got two screws on this right side of the cylinder that we're gonna remove. And as you take these off, keep track of all the washers and any spacers or collars. So everything on this bolt, I'm trying to keep together. So, I mean, we've got several spacers, a spring, a couple levers. After that, we're gonna remove our gear segment. Then we'll remove this screw and retainer for the control shaft. And this should be a T25. Then we can remove the control shaft. Then on the left side of the cylinder, we've got the T30 bolt going in there, and then we have that T25 screw. We're gonna remove both of those in this gear segment. And just like the other side, you wanna remove that control shaft. Now you did notice when we removed that base nut, you know, we had all that oil in here. So we're definitely gonna make sure we get new O-rings on all this stuff when we go back together. Now, just because this is so dirty, I'm gonna to try to get some of these big chunks off before we split this exhaust flange off of the cylinder. So with that cleaned up just a little bit, I do want to point out a difference on the 300s. So that retaining plate we had, it's going to be longer and go all the way over to this other shaft. You're going to remove another screw on both sides. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and remove the exhaust flange. We're going to use our five millimeter Allen to do that. We'll remove these four bolts. And before you loosen these two, pay attention to how the spring mounts are right now so you can get them back in the same way.
Now, even though the bolts are out, this flange is gonna take a little bit of pressure to pry off. So I'm just gonna take a pry bar and gently pry between the cylinder. We've got that support right there and the exhaust flange. Gently pry on that. If it doesn't start coming right away, make sure you don't break anything, be patient. You can tap on it with a mallet as well. Lightly tap on it. So after that, you're gonna remove your control flap. Just pay attention to how that goes back in. And then right on top, you have four O-rings. We're gonna remove those. We've got one over here that's stuck to the other side. Now that we have those parts removed, we can go ahead and clean all this stuff up. So, you know, with all this carbon, you definitely wanna clean it off your parts. You can use some oven cleaner or carbon remover to help you do that. Um, then with the other stuff, like right here, we're using the gasket scraper, and then we'll just spray it down with some contact cleaner. Now, one thing you don't wanna overlook while you're cleaning your cylinder is this brass fitting. So this connects that line that goes up to your pressure sensor, and you wanna make sure this is free and clear every time the cylinder is off. So with that being said, I'm just taking a small drill bit. I'm gonna run it through by hand, make sure there's no buildup in there. So that's free and clear. I'm also gonna spray that out. Now to inspect your cylinder, you wanna check this for any cracks. You also wanna inspect the Nicosil coating. Ideally, you're gonna see a crosshatch pattern down inside of there. If you don't, that indicates some wear. And also at the top, you can see a lot of times there's gonna be a little bit of carbon buildup right there and there'll be a little line. That indicates the highest point where your ring actually travels. And if you clean that carbon away, you can use a little bit of Scotch-Brite and some contact cleaner and a rag to do that. If you clean it away and run your fingernail across there, and if you feel a, a small ridge, that indicates where as well. So if you feel a ridge there, then I would definitely get the cylinder recoated or replace it. Now, the other thing that can happen, you know, this Nicosil, it can flake away. So you're gonna look around all of the ports Make sure it's not flaked away. And you can also see pitting sometimes. Uh, if there's a lot of pitting, again, get it repaired. So our cylinder is looking pretty good. We do see a few dots. We might've had some moisture get in here. I don't think we had a bad head gasket. Our coolant was full, but just to verify that it wasn't coolant, we're gonna take some measurements and check the top of the cylinder and our cylinder head to make sure they're not warped. So luckily for us, our cylinder head surface isn't warped. So we're gonna go ahead and deglaze our cylinder by honing it. Now, I know some people don't like to do that, but we know the rings are gonna seal better if we do it. So if you need to know how to do that, we have a separate video that guides you through those steps. Now on these power valve parts, we're gonna remove four O-rings and replace them with new ones when we reassemble. Now we're ready to start prepping and assembling our parts. So with that, I recommend checking your ring gap. A lot of times you won't have to change it, but for us, we just wanna make sure it's good. And I actually already measured this. We're measuring 16 thousandths of an inch clearance on the end gap, but to check it, 
You're just going to use the piston to square it up. And I like to use just that bottom ring groove as a guide just to make sure it's square. Use your feeler gauge, slide it in there, in the gap. And you just go till you feel a light drag on that feeler gauge and the next size can't fit in. Now, like I said, typically you're not gonna have to adjust that, but you just wanna verify that it's good. And usually there's some paperwork that gives you guidance on what the gap should be for your particular piston. So with that being said, we can go ahead and move on to assembling our power valve. To assemble the power valve, we're gonna start by assembling the control shafts. I've got these new O-rings. The old ones were leaking. So we'll apply some grease to those. And then you can use the leftover grease on the shaft or some assembly lube. I like to have something on there so it's not metal on metal. And then, you know, with these control shafts, one of them has an L on it right there. That's your left side. And this gear, when you slide it in, it's gonna to face towards the back of the cylinder. So we'll start with that left side. And then on the bolt for the retaining plate, we're gonna put some medium strength thread lock on both of those. And they get torqued to 4.4 foot pounds. We'll go ahead and install the plate on this left side. And we can flip the cylinder over and do the same thing on the right side. Next, we've got our O-rings on the control flap. We'll put grease on those. So with that, I'm gonna apply grease to the shafts as well. And then we also have these bearing sleeves. I'm gonna put grease on those, slide them in place. And then I don't wanna install this dry. I'm just gonna put a little bit of assembly lube on it. So right now I'm putting just a dab of grease on the cylinder where the exhaust flap bearing rides. I'm gonna set this into place. And then with that, we're gonna apply some silicone sealant, some high temp sealant to that sealing surface. So we wanna make sure it's really clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it down with a little contact cleaner real quick. So next we're gonna install these four O-rings and you don't really need silicone on them. I'm just putting a dab on the back just to hold them in place so they don't move. When you're using silicone, make sure you have your rubber gloves on. I'm just gonna apply it to this exhaust flange surface. I'm just gonna dab it on with a finger that way it's thin enough that it's not gonna spread anywhere we don't want it. The only other thing I'm doing is applying just barely a little bit of grease down where that bearing surface is. And then we're gonna install the exhaust flange. Now real quick, before we tighten the bolts down, I'm just making sure the control flap goes through the full range of motion, which it does. Next, we're gonna install the right side gear segment. And then we have this whole assembly that we took off. So you got a couple pivot arms on there, a spring, a couple collars and a bolt going through the middle. We're gonna apply 
some Loctite to that bolt. And with this, the arm that's on bottom is the one that's gonna be going through that pin coming up from the gear segment. So the long side of the spring, it's gonna rest on the pin in the arm. And then you've got the pin that's closer to the bolt. The short end of the spring is gonna go around that. So once you have those in their places, you can go ahead and torque down the bolt. We're gonna to torque it to 7.4 foot pounds. I'm gonna flip the cylinder over. We'll install the gear segment. Make sure you can go through the full range of motion when you install this. On this side, we can go ahead and install our bolt and again, torque it to 7.4 foot pounds. We've got a little bit of Loctite on there as well. Now back on the right side, there is one more bolt that we need to install, but we need to wait until the cylinder is installed. So moving on with assembly, we're gonna install our one circlip into our piston and both rings. Now to prep our piston, we're gonna install a circlip on one side. So we've got the exhaust side and we're gonna leave the side on the left side of the bike open so we can slide the wrist pin through that way. So I'm actually gonna do that now. That's gonna help us install that wrist pin circlip. Now when we install this, you know, we've got those two openings towards the bottom of the piston. So I'm gonna have the open end of the circlip facing up. And then I'm gonna press that wrist pin almost out to the groove, just so it kind of helps prevent that circlip from going in too far. Sometimes they can pop out and actually damage that wrist pin boss. So don't want that to happen. Other than that, we're gonna start with that groove at the top. You don't wanna scratch your piston, so be really careful. What we're gonna do is very gently use the screwdriver like a ramp, and we're mostly pressing this in with our thumbs. We're just gonna work it in a little bit at a time. Next, we're gonna install our piston rings. So on the intake side of the piston, you have those two pins. So you're gonna line the gap up with those, and then each piston ring is gonna have a marking. The marking needs to face up towards the cylinder head. And then both rings on this piston are exactly the same. So we'll just work that around. And while I'm here on the bench, I'm gonna lube up the wrist pin bosses and the wrist pin as well as that needle bearing. Now we're gonna lube up the connecting rod over at the bike and uh, we'll install that wrist pin bearing. And then very critical, again, make sure that arrow is facing the exhaust side. We've got our wrist pin started in here. So we'll set that over the connecting rod. We'll line everything up. You can reach through the other side to help line everything up. From here, we can install that circlip. And again, I'm gonna use that screwdriver like a ramp. The open side is gonna be at 12 o'clock. And just a little tip when you do this, you know, again, be very careful not to over uh, compress that snap ring so it's not loose in there. And then when you do this, if you're like right on the end of that clip, it's gonna be much easier than if you have the screwdriver moved in. So 
So the next step is to install your base gasket. You want to remove the rag from the bottom end and then lube up the piston. Now the thing with the base gasket is you have all those different sizes. You need to pick the right one. That's where these tusk decking and timing tools come into play. We have a separate video that shows you how to use these, but basically you're going to install a base gasket, take a measurement, and then depending on what the measurement is, you might have to change the size of your base gasket. So if you want to do all that before you compress the rings into the cylinder, you can take those off, mount the cylinder up, bolt it down, take that measurement. We've already done that. We actually had to use two gaskets combined to get the correct clearance right there. So I'll go ahead and install these back on. And before I lube this up, I'm gonna rotate it to bottom dead center. Now we're gonna install the cylinder. With this, keep in mind that you have those gaps in the piston rings that need to stay lined up with the pins. And as we slide this down, we're just gonna squeeze those piston rings together to allow it to go into the cylinder. Once the rings are in, we'll go ahead Line the cylinder up with the studs, slide it all the way down. And we're gonna install the cylinder base nuts and torque them to spec. I'm going to rotate the engine over and let the piston come to top dead center. I'm just going to wipe off any excess assembly lube right there. All right, so I'm moving the piston back down to bottom dead center. So the next thing we need to do is take our Z measurement. So we're getting the power valve set up basically is what we're doing. We put this together on the bench, but we did leave a screw out. And what we're gonna do, we've got our decking and timing tool. So this is gonna help us with the Z measurement. This is 49 millimeters on the 250. I believe it's 49 and a half on the 300s. In either case, what you're gonna do is rest this edge on the top of the cylinder. And then we're gonna hook this underneath the power valve as far as it hangs down. And we're gonna go right in the middle. And that's with the power valve pushed all the way down. And to help you find the middle, you can kind of move it back and forth and see if you have play. We barely have some play in there. We could probably just leave it, but we're gonna show you how to, how to adjust this up perfectly. So if you do find that you need to adjust this up, you have a set screw and a jam nut right here. We're just gonna use, we already removed the radiator hose just to show you guys this, but you know, this step you can actually do on the bench. So I'm gonna loosen that up. I've got a three millimeter Allen. So from here we can move the set screw in or out depending on how far we want this to go down. So if we want it further down, you're gonna rotate that counterclockwise. So I'm gonna rotate this up just a little bit. Set that in there. We'll push it back down, find the center. So once you find the place where you don't have any play in the tool, you can go ahead and tighten down your jam nut. From here, we need to finish making our power valve adjustments. So what I'm gonna do is apply some grease to that ball socket and we're gonna snap this linkage arm into place. 
So I'm going to move that lever until it lines up. Then we've got this vent hose fitting. I'm going to loosen that, loosen that up and remove it. You're going to want to take a bolt that is long enough to press down on that gear link arm. We're going to thread that into the same holes that we removed that vent from. Now all we're doing with this is making sure the gear segment is pressed all the way down. So we're going to bottom that bolt out on that, but you're just going to make sure it's barely tight. You're not trying to force anything down. So that's all the way down. Once you've done that, you can install the bolt that we didn't install earlier when we were assembling the power valve. And we're going to apply some Loctite to that. We're going to torque that to 5.9 foot pounds. After that, we can remove the bolt. We'll reinstall our fitting. And with that fitting, keep in mind, you're going to apply some Loctite to that. And it's just barely going to be snugged down. And I'm gonna pop off that linkage arm one last time. Now we can install this gasket. Snap the ball socket back into place. And then we have the retaining clip we need to put in there. After that, we can reinstall the cover and tighten down the bolts. After that, we're gonna install our power valve cover and new gasket on the other side. Next, we're gonna install both of the O-rings or our cylinder head gasket. Make sure the dowels are in the correct spots and then we'll install the cylinder head. We're going to install all six bolts with new ceiling washers and we're going to torque them down in a crisscross pattern to 19.9 foot pounds. Next, we want to install a new spark plug. The next thing you want to do is take care of all of your oil pump stuff. So the oil pump should be replaced every 80 hours. And there's actually a screen inside the oil tank. The manual wants you to clean that out every 40 hours, whether you do that or not, that's up to you. But we have a separate video on how to replace your oil pump, how to prime it. And, you know, when we were doing the cylinder cleaning, we already cleaned the fitting for the pressure sensor, but we also need to clean this hose out. So what I'm going to do is remove it and just blow it out with some compressed air. And I'll reinstall the hose and position the clamps. And if you think you have any issues with one of these sensors, we actually do have a video that kind of shows you how to check that stuff as well.
Next, I'm gonna install the fuel injector assembly. And to make it easier to install, I'm gonna spray these rubber O-rings with some silicone lubricant. Now we're gonna install the injector bolts with a little bit of Loctite on them. And we're just gonna snug these down. You don't wanna go crazy. We don't wanna damage the injectors. Once you have both sides bolted down, you wanna reconnect the electrical connectors to the injectors. We'll put the rubber boot in place. After that, we'll connect the coolant temp sensor and we can reinstall the radiator hoses. After that, we can connect our spark plug cap. Now we can attach the breather hose and we're going to install the engine hangers. Now with the hangers, the bolts are going to be torqued to 18.4 foot pounds on each side with Loctite. After that, we'll reinstall the pipe. I also have a little bit of silicone around those O-rings. From here, we just need to reinstall the gas tank, our seat, and then we're gonna to top the radiator off with coolant. We're gonna run the bike and let it come up to operating temperature, shut it off, let it cool down, then we'll double check that coolant level and make sure we don't have any leaks. Now, from here, you just need to worry about break-in. So the first five hours, the manual wants you to take it easy on this motor. You can refer to it for more information about that. Now, if you need any parts for your top end rebuild, you can pick those up on our website. That's all there is to rebuilding the KTM 250 and 300 TPI dirt bikes. If you wanna see more helpful content like this, subscribe to our channel. I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATVMC. Thanks for watching.